We've now seen episode 2 of the Outriders broadcast called Beyond the Frontier. I did make a video on what was shown off in episode 1, so be sure to check that one out as well. But this episode gave us some new environments, a look at the structure of the game, and an in-depth look at the Pyromancer class. We're going to go over all of this stuff, so if you enjoy the video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future Outrider stuff coming on the channel. The broadcast starts with a cutscene which reveals a bit more information about the story. We came to Enoch looking for Hope, an untouched planet, and then we found the signal. So we set out to discover its source, and that's where we first encounter the anomaly. When this anomaly storm strikes, the Outriders are forced back into cryosleep. 30 years later they finally wake to find that the world and themselves have changed. The signal is still out there and at its source is a chance to find answers and to start again. Remind you of Anthem anybody? Me too. And that worries me ever so slightly. That's nothing against Outriders. This game looks great and I know it's not a live service or anything like that but I was stung so badly by Anthem that I get worried when I see a game that looks similar to it. There will be an hour and a half of performance captured cutscenes in the main story of Outriders, with a further two hours of cutscenes for the side missions and extra story content, all of which will feature a fully customizable character at the forefront of them. People Can Fly go on to talk about the journey and the structure of the game, saying that the game is massive in terms of game length, the amount of hours that you'll be able to sink into it, and the physical distance that there is to travel in Enoch as well. In the previous Outriders episode, they talked about the first city, an area of Enoch that the refugees of Earth first settled in, hence the name. This city sits in the colonised section of Enoch, where humans have made a life, built cities, strongholds, factories and mines to survive on this planet. So it's not going to be a huge surprise that this will be the first area of the game where we will wake up from our cryo sleep and spend the first few hours learning the ropes. Humanity has always struggled to push past the boundaries of the colonised areas of this world, with the anomaly storm and monsters preventing further colonisation and pushing society back to the Dark Ages. But as an outrider, you're one of the lucky few who has the power to leave the settlements and venture across this hostile planet. The structure of the game is laid out using a hub and spoke system. This system connects the busier area, the hubs, to the combat free room areas, which are the spokes. The main story missions will push you through the game with the side quests and extra story missions discovered off the beaten path. Pretty much what you'd expect from any game of this type. Side quests will also scale to your level as will the rewards, meaning that even early game side quests can be played later in the game for a decent reward. People can fly go on to confirm that these side quests aren't fluffy objectives either. They will unlock new areas, information about the world, and lore that you would otherwise miss completely if you don't hunt these out. The footage then takes us to a new area of the game called Eagle Peaks to see one of these side missions play out. This side mission is basically a crazy cult leader who is sacrificing people to an anomaly storm and we have to stop him. We get some more gameplay with some abilities in here as well, again looking like what you'd expect from most games of this genre. Once you've completed any of the side quests, you will be able to choose your reward from one of three items that are presented to you. I really like that idea that it's not entirely RNG based. I mean, you still need a decent amount of luck to get one of those three items that you need, but it's a much better chance. Moving on to the hubs next, these are kind of social spaces or towns within the game. You'll be able to visit vendors to sell your scrap and buy new gear, head into bars to gather information and collect some bounties, and you'll also be able to pick up side quests from some of these hubs. They did say in the footage that they were really adamant that these areas needed to feel dynamic and alive, so fingers crossed they've got that right. Hubs will also enable us to check on our truck and the crew, which will expand as we progress through the game, something that will be discussed in a future video. They did tell us that the truck's primary function will be to transport you through the world and is essentially your own personal hub. You'll have crafting, a weapon vendor, stuff like that. Sadly it was confirmed that we won't be able to drive the truck, it will instead be driven by an NPC called Jakob. But we will be able to customise the truck though so I suppose that's something. As we progress through the game, the world state and the NPC dialogue will change depending on pivotal moments in the story, also unlocking new side quests that were hidden before. So this will reward you for going back and exploring areas that you've already cleared to unlock some extra stuff within those play spaces. We've then got a bit more information on the crew themselves. We've got Jakob the driver and he'll be the guy who can customise our truck. We also have Zahedi, our scientist, who will have weapon mods and crafting options. And finally, they introduce a couple of people in one go. We've got Bailey, who will be our gear vendor, offering unique weapons and armor that we're able to trade for scrap. 
She has been instructed to join our team by the Grand Master of Trenchtown, Corrigan, who has allowed us to travel through sectors of the settlement. We'll have a stash available at the camp that can be accessed by any of your six created characters, and there will also be a hammock at the camp where we can change the look of our character at any time. And the matchmaking terminal will be found here as well if you want to team up for any of those missions. The broadcast then got into the abilities for the Pyromancer. As with the Trickster, we got a look at four of these. There are eight available for every class, but they are only showing four at the moment. So the Pyromancer is for players who want to take on hordes of enemies at once, but from a medium range, as they lack the movement speed to get in and out of combat quickly, like the Trickster. And that works in favour for the Pyromancer, as a lot of the abilities are area of effect based, so you need that little bit of extra room to line your abilities up. The fundamentals of the Pyromancer class are explosive, immobilise and ignite. It's focused around thermal and fire attacks, even down to the melee attack dealing fire damage to anyone it hits. As we found out with the trickster information, there is no quick fix for getting health back. You can't just hide because it simply won't replenish. You need to play aggressively to restore your health. And the healer mechanic on the Pyromancer is that you will regain health whenever enemies marked by your skills are killed. So any Pyromancer skill that damages an enemy will mark them for a set amount of time. So you want to try and hit enemies with multiple abilities and kill them quickly to replenish your health. And as you'd expect, a lot of the Pyromancer skills inflict a burning status effect, setting enemies on fire and causing damage over time. This burn effect can be used to stun enemies and even interrupt abilities used against you. Now the four skills we got a look at were the Thermal Bomb, Ash Blast, Heat Wave and Overheat. Thermal Bomb sets enemies alight and deals damage over time. If that enemy dies while still under the effects of this ability, they will rise into the air and explode, causing damage to a pretty sizable area. This one would be really useful with mobs of enemies with the potential to clear them all out in one go. Ash Blast applies the Ash status effect to all enemies in a large radius, which immobilizes them. This one's going to be great for crowd control. It can cause large numbers of enemies to freeze, giving you time to get out of there if you feel like you're being overrun, or to line up other abilities to cause massive amounts of damage. Heat Wave is one of the earliest powers that is unlocked in the game. It's perfect for damage over the medium distance that the Pyromancer is suited to. You'll pull up a load of flames from the ground, causing the burn effect. Another useful one if you're being rushed with the ability to cause huge damage to big mobs. And finally, Overheat. This ability deals small amount of damage to enemies over a large radius, dealing extra damage to ones who are already burning. So this one is a good combination move if you've already applied one of the other burn effects. Heat Wave and Overheat together will be a great combination for clearing out big groups of enemies and healing yourself at the same time. As I said earlier, there are another four skills that we don't have any details about yet, but this information will be released at a later date. Each class has skill trees to unlock to change the way your build will work. Class points are acquired by simply leveling up, and although you can't fill out the whole tree as you have to choose a path to head down, you will be able to respect these nodes and get all those class points back whenever you feel like you want to switch it up. The three Pyromancer skill tree branches are Ashbreaker, which deals bonus damage to marked enemies, Firestorm grants bonus skill damage, anomaly power, and burn damage. And finally, the Tempest branch is more of a tanky roll, increasing your max health and reducing the amount of incoming damage you take. This one even has a perk that grants an automatic revival when you die, and this can revive you every three minutes. I think that about covers everything from the episode. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the game, or at least what we've seen of it so far. Thanks as ever for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss any future Outriders videos, and I shall see you guys again soon.